Good morning, Aubrey. How's it going? I'm great. How are you, Jessica? Ah, uh, you know, I'm good. Um, I live in Portland, Oregon, and the teachers here are on strike. And today is the tenth day in a row that James does not have school because the teachers are on strike. So there's that's just some some up to date news from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, how does that work? <laughs> is he sent home with stuff to work on? Like no, no, because the teachers are not working, right? No. So like there, there's nothing. There's nothing for the kids to do. So they will extend um, the school year into the summer to make up for the days. So they'll have the same amount of days in school. It'll just go into the summer. I hope but they can get it figured out soon. That's so awful for the kids <laughs> and parents and, and teachers. Like they want to be working. They want to figure it out, but they want to be compensated fairly. It is, it, you know, we could have a whole conversation about that. Maybe that's something for All Ears English mm, um, yes. that could be could be in an episode. Guys, if you're not listening to All Ears English, you are missing out. Four free, amazing lessons every single week on All Ears English. So hit follow over there as well. Yes, that's a really fun podcast. It's me, Michelle, Lindsay, and oh, so much great vocabulary, really interesting topics about the stuff you guys want to be talking about in English and can also help for IELTS for IELTS. sure because it's going yeah. to give you lots of ideas, lots of vocabulary to use on the exam. So definitely totally. follow others English as well. Um, and guys, I want to remind you of an episode we did recently because this has been a very, very popular episode and I don't want you guys to miss it. It's IELTS Energy 1328. So if you did miss that, guys, or even if you listened, go back and listen again. It's called Don't Use Get on IELTS. Um, we talk about how common the word get is and what we can replace it with to have much higher vocabulary scores. So go back and listen to IELTS Energy 1328. 1328 don't use get on IELTS. It's been a one of the most popular episodes we've ever done. So go back and listen to that one. Yes, really good one. Just scroll up if you missed it. Be sure to hit follow here guys if you're missing episodes. You don't want to miss any of our episodes. Two episodes every week. So today guys, we are going to talk about how and why you should slow down on IELTS speaking during the exam. But before we get to that, we have some poll results to announce. Yes, this is a fun one. We asked a few episodes ago, ago, what is your strongest IELTS skill? And I was really excited to see what you guys said. So we're going to share the results. Listening was 25%, reading 25%, writing 16%, speaking 33%. This was kind of shocking to me, actually, because so many of our students are like, speaking is where I struggle the most. So it's interesting yeah. that a lot of our listeners find that is their strongest skill. I know. I'm surprised as well. I yeah. thought listening, I thought listening would take it away, you know, with For like sure. the total highest percentage. But um, yeah, I was speaking. So congratulations, guys. <laughs> That's good news. No, really um, and the the question today actually is about speaking from a student on um, that sent this on Spotify, I believe. Um, guys, if you are listening on Spotify, we are going to have another poll today, a super fun one. We'll announce that at the end of today's episode. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for that. Awesome. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and read this question. This is a really good one. I have a feeling a lot of you out there are in the same boat as Eric. Yeah. This is from Eric Shi. And he just said, I just have a lot of things running in my mind spontaneously, which ain't much showing fluency. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was trying to use That's that so ain't, right? Like I'm having a hard time <laughs> showing my fluency because I have all of these different thoughts in my head. I feel mm -hmm. like as a communicator, I'm thinking at a rate of band 8.5, but just speaking yeah at band 6.5. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, like this happens to everyone in every language, right? Oh, like yeah. if I have time to think about stuff and plan it in my head, oh my gosh, I sound amazing. Like I sound so impressive in my head. But then when you try to verbalize something, it doesn't always happen as smoothly as it does in our minds. It's like, you know, if um, you're in an argument with someone and five days after the argument, you're like, oh, 
I should have said this. This would have been the best thing to say, (laughs) you know, thinking quickly on the spot spontaneously and saying that um, in the best way possible is difficult. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think sometimes we think this will come automatically, that if we're learning lots of vocabulary and we have all these great thoughts, that we'll automatically be able to speak and have it be very fluent. And we don't Mm -hmm. necessarily practice that. And that's a big mistake, right? There's no, it's not a given that you're going to be able to speak fluently. This is something that has to be practiced a lot before test day, Mm -hmm. before those in-person conversations. A hundred percent. Yep. Um, so right now we're going to tell you a couple ways about how you can slow down and give yourself more time to formulate those thoughts into words that you say out loud, because this is the answer is slowing down a little bit. Um, and I want to clear up the misconception right away that you'll get a lower speaking score if you speak more slowly. That's not true, guys. If you are speaking so slowly that there are huge gaps between your words of silence, that is where you lose points for speaking slowly. Okay. If you slow down a little bit, it doesn't lower your score. It actually helps it in a number of ways. Yes, because the only way that you can emphasize interesting words, those adjectives and adverbs, is if you're speaking slowly enough that you can give those words room and emphasize them. If you're speaking too quickly, everyone tends to sort of go into a monotone. They're Mm -hmm. not showing that expressiveness. They're not showing emotion. And this is really tempting, especially if you're nervous. If you don't practice slowing down on test day, if you get a little nervous, it's really easy to start speaking really quickly and not have Mm -hmm. that interesting pronunciation and intonation and not be able to think of the great vocab. So the first step, right, when you're slowing down is to give yourself that room sort of like breathe and give yourself room to emphasize interesting vocabulary, adjectives. Um, And I think a lot of students think the faster I talk, the better my score will be because I sound fluent, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) Um, And this is funny because I was teaching a fourth grade class yesterday and um, one of the girls, she's like super smart, really good reader. And so I asked her to read out loud and she was reading so fast because like she thought, oh, like this shows that I'm a great reader if I can read really fast. And I'm like, no, it doesn't because nobody could understand you. And you start to say words wrong. You skip words because you're going too quickly. So going too fast, it just is not great, guys. Um, All right. So here are a couple ideas for how you can slow down a couple tools. First of all, use introduction fillers like, oh, wow, you know, I I haven't thought about that a lot before. Um, it's a long phrase and it gives you time to think of ideas, right? And it does show fluency because that is natural, guys. We use fillers before we get to the point all the time. Absolutely. If you go back and listen to that filler Jessica just shared, you don't want to be saying, oh man, I haven't really thought about that in a long time. Like flat, (laughs) monotone, no space. She's giving these words space. She's drying them out a little bit. That's very native and natural. Gives you more time to think and Mm -hmm. allows you to add that interesting intonation. Oh man, I haven't thought about that in a while. Interesting. Um, it's like the, the one filler that all students use, I feel like is, um, that's an interesting question. Like everybody says that. So, which is a sign guys don't say that cause mm. it's too common, but, um, contrast that, right? What if I'm saying it slowly? Oh, that that's an interesting question. Or if I'm saying it quickly, just because I want to show I'm fluent quotation marks, that's an interesting question. Like, <laughs> Robotic. So good. Um, yeah. So one more way, guys, you could slow down, which is totally native and natural, is just to breathe, especially in part three when the questions get tough. It is, again, totally natural to take a breath before you even get to that filler phrase. So if the examiner asks you something difficult, like, um, what are, let's see, what are the advantages of, of increasing taxes on large companies? I don't think that's an IELTS question. That's really hard. But if it, excuse me, if it were, then you could, uh, uh, react by like, oh, 
wow, that's, you know, that's a really hard question, honestly. Um, so that initial like deep breath in that's that again, it's natural. It gives you time to think it's a way to calm yourself, slow down, collect your thoughts. Exactly. A question like that. It might even be strange to dive right in like, oh, I know exactly what to <laughs> say. Be. This is actually much right? more natural. This is what a native would do to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's tricky. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, Aubrey. So let's Let's tell our listeners um, the reasons why this advice is so vital. Let's prove it to our smart adult listeners out there because, guys, we respect you. We know you need to know why we're telling you to do this, right? So how does slowing down affect their score? Yeah. And then we're going to share an example of sort of the wrong way and the right way. So this will be very clear for you guys' practice. So, okay. First of all, you need to slow down so that you have time to think of ideas. If you are speaking really fast in one sentence and then there's a pause, a hesitation, I don't know what to say. Your fluency score is coming down. Whereas yeah. instead, if you have one sentence that you've got, slow down a little, emphasize the interesting words, breathe. And then during that time, you have time to think of what you're going to say next. Yeah. It's that um, idiom, like gather your thoughts, you know? Yes. Um, all of those uh, examples that we just gave you of breathing, using a long filler phrase, while you're doing that, the, the, you're thinking of ideas. You're coming up with the examples and reasons, right? Um, so it's really important that this one piece of advice, I think would really help this listener go from that 6.5 to um, showing that 8.5 that he feels like he is in his head, you know, just gathering the ideas, getting them out. Um, the next good reason, guys, to slow down is you will make fewer mistakes. Like that example I gave of that fourth grade girl. If she's reading too fast, she's skipping words, she's saying words incorrectly. It's the same, guys. However, whatever you are saying out loud, if you're going too fast, you're going to make more mistakes. Um, in grammar, in vocabulary, you'll repeat more words. You'll um, have like simple grammar mistakes, skipping articles, for example, because you're speaking too quickly. Absolutely. The next one is you will be having fewer filters like uh, um, and like those that pull down your fluency and coherence score, if you slow down a little bit, you can eliminate those because instead of needing that time, filling it with uh, while you think, you're able to think as you speak a little more slowly. Yeah, because I, I hear this a lot. This isn't, this isn't true for everyone that speaks too fast. But I hear this from students who are really trying to speak quickly because they think that shows fluency because maybe the level isn't quite as high as you need to speak really fast, right? And so while they're speaking quickly, there's there's us and ums, ands, likes between words, right? Like gluing these words together to try and get them out without silence. So that is another thing that we don't want to do. And then the last reason, which is huge, and this is something that Aubrey has mentioned a couple times, guys, because it is so true. When you slow down, then you can show better stress, intonation, rhythm in your sentences, guys. And that is what you need for a higher pronunciation score. When you speak quickly, and you'll hear it in the example now that Aubrey's going to give you, when you speak too quickly, guys, there's no time for intonation and stress and rhythm, right? Exactly. You have to slow down. Okay, I'm going to give the poor example, right? This is what you should not do. And then we'll have Jessica give the band nine example. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Ready? <yay. laughs> All right. So we're assuming that I've been asked about the beach and if people where I live go to the beach. All right. People like to go to the beach where I live. They prefer going in summer rather than in winter since it's always crowded in June and July, but no one is really at the beach in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Like, um, <laughs> It's so hard for you to be monotone. Like even in that speaking quickly, I could still hear some nice intonation. Honestly, like it's true okay. because often students, it's even less so really just like people like yeah. to go to the beach where I live. They prefer going in summer rather than in winter since it's always crowded. It's true. I have such a tendency to really have good intonation that it's hard to force myself to a monotone. But the faster you speak, the more you forget about the interesting intonation and it goes totally. just monotone. 
Totally. All right, that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> now, um, if we slow down, if we're following today's advice, this answer would be much better. I could say, you know, going to the beach is by far the best activity to do where I live. Everyone I know absolutely loves a beach day and hands down, they prefer to go when it's super hot out in the blistering summer rather than in winter when they're totally like freezing to death. <laughs> nice. That's oh a man, answer. such a difference, right? You have time to come up with this <clears throat> vocabulary. Like as you're saying super hot because you're speaking a little more slowly, that adjective blistering might come to you, you know, in the blistering summer. And just because you're taking that time to give words a little space, your intonation is so much more high scoring. Your pronunciation score would be a lot higher. Awesome. All right, guys. So before we announce today's Spotify poll, I want to tell you um, just the biggest takeaway from today, guys. Try to slow down. It'll it'll relax you. It'll help you perform better on the speaking exam. It'll increase your pronunciation score immediately and probably also your vocab and your grammar score because you'll make fewer mistakes. And as Aubrey said earlier, guys, you do have to practice doing this before test day. So as soon as we're done with this episode, practice, guys. All right, Aubrey, what is today's poll? Yes. So the Spotify poll will be, what would you get on IELTS speaking if you took it today? We'll have the options be five, six, seven, or eight. We want to know, how do you feel? Where do you think you are for with your band score there? Awesome. Awesome. And we will announce those results uh, very soon. Um, awesome. Oh, and guys, we're having a small little change here on IELTS Energy. We have been publishing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but now we're going to start releasing episodes on Tuesdays and Fridays. So um, give you more time during the week to listen to that new episode. And then you have all weekend to listen to the second one. So still, guys, you will always get two episodes episodes a week, brand new from us. Awesome. Yes. Thanks to, for joining me today, Jessica. This was a really fun and I think very useful episode. It was great. It was great. All right, Aubrey. See you next time. Bye. Bye.